Good evening, Constant Reader, and welcome back to the Stephen King Book Club. Tonight, we delve into the cinematic details of 1979's Salem's Lot to find out which moments are true to the spirit of the book and which scenes fall apart. Every film critic has a personal bias, and here's mine. I am a child of the 1970s and 80s. I was eight years old when Salem's Lots debuted on CBS, which meant I was the perfect age to be traumatized by this nightmare. This guy right here, this vampiric member of the Blue Man Group, Kurt Barlow. Now, years later, as a teenager, I read the novel, and I kept waiting to find this smurfy Nosferatu among the pages. But instead, of course, Kurt Barlow in Stephen King's book is very different. But we'll get to that later. Mr. Barlow is on a buying trip, but the moment he arrives, he'll enjoy Mr. Barlow. And he'll enjoy you. But first, allow me to walk through some of my favorite and not-so-favorite moments from this 1979 miniseries. Smash! The film starts off a lot like the book does. These two heroes have escaped a vampire-infested town, and they are regrouping at a church south of the border, and they are hoping to equip themselves with holy water. Keep in mind, bottled water wasn't a thing back then, so that's why it looks so amazing. Our protagonist, Ben Mears, is played by the actor David Soule, who I was a big fan of at the time because he was one of the characters in Starsky and Hutch. And, side note, Starsky and Hutch fight a vampire. Or, it's not really a vampire, it's a guy who thinks he's a vampire. Anyway, back to Salem's Lot. Ben Mears is the kind of character who wants to do the right thing, even if it's just shutting the door properly. Novelist Ben Mears has recently arrived in town, and he's not the only one. James Mason plays the debonair and devious Mr. Straker. To me, one of the things that the book does so well is that it shows how small-town life can look ideal on the surface, but there might be something sinister or something rotting underneath. And despite its flaws, I think the film is doing its best to present this, they didn't film in Maine, but they did film in a quaint little California town called Ferndale. And so this town does have this charming, quaint appeal to it. The book contains a vast ensemble of characters, really too many for a three-hour film, so the script combines many of these characters. And here we see the real estate big shot Larry Crockett, played by the comedic Fred Willard, is having an affair with Bonnie Sawyer. Whereas in the book, Bonnie Sawyer is sleeping with the younger man, Corey Bryant. Both the novel and the film are a slow burn. We meet Straker early on, tensions build, but it takes a little while before anything supernatural happens. But we do meet the lovely Susan Norton, who just so happens to be reading Ben Mears book. So he does what any novelist in the 1970s would do when meeting a fan. He sleeps with her. One of my favorite characters is Constable Parkins Gillespie, played by Kenneth McMillan, the best Baron Harkonnen ever. <laughs> McMillan adds the perfect combination of concern mixed with a strong sense of self-preservation. He's one of the few people to realize that something very bad is going on, and also one of the few people to survive by leaving town. And I don't blame him one bit. There's no Dr. James Cody in this version. Instead, Susan's dad, Bill, takes his place. It does add a Meet the Parents vibe to it. Another vibe that is very different from the book is that Mr. Straker is often portrayed as nervous and paranoid instead of, as in the book, smug and overconfident. Oh, and there are a lot of scenes where Straker is driving. I mean, a lot of driving sequences. But let's get to the creepy stuff. There are some genuinely spooky moments and jump scares, thanks to director Toby Hooper of Chainsaw Massacre fame. Anytime there's a dark figure that pounces from the shadows, I flinch. Case in point. <laughs> Who 
<sighs> is it over? Finally, Mr. Barlow arrives from overseas in a box marked fragile, which must be an Italian word like ciao. Ciao? Ciao? That's a familiar Italian expression meaning goodbye. I didn't know you were Italian. I'm not. The word is. Well, you learn something new every day. One of the film's cooler effects is whenever Ralphie Glick is floating outside the window. See, even this guy thinks it's cool. The late Lance Kirschwin plays Mark Petrie, a good-natured teen with a penchant for monster movies and oh dear god, what is happening? Though it skips over many parts of the book, the movie does give us a glimpse of Stephen King's central theme. Evil is attracted to evil. <laughs> The moral lapse begins with ourselves. We are the ones who open the door, or in this case, the coffin. Ultimately, it is the people of Salem's Lot who are inviting evil into their town. Side note, I love everything about the vampire eyes in this movie. It takes a lot of courage to resist and reject that kind of supernatural evil. And it takes a lot of courage for an actor to go all in on a character the way Jeffrey Lewis does here. Let's watch, shall we? Look at me. Look at me, teacher. Mr. Burke says no, but I say yes. But what about Barlow? In the 2004 remake, Rutger Hauer plays the character quite closer to the book, charismatic, sinister, and downright talkative. But back in 1979, there had already been a lot of handsome vampires, including Frank Langella's Dracula and George Hamilton in Love at First Bite. So the filmmakers of Salem's Lot went for an unspeakable sort of evil. They took their inspiration from the silent film Nosferatu, and thus Barlow is a mute menace, and Mr. Straker does all of the talking. You can do nothing against the master. Stop, holy man! You cut the boy's throat. There are a lot of other differences I could go into, including Susan returning at the end as the final sultry vampire boss, but you get the idea. Before I go, though, I do want to tip my hat to the production design of the Marston House. This is pretty much how I imagine the setting when I read the book, so kudos to the artistic directors. Have you read the book and or watched Salem's Lot? If so, I'd love to know your thoughts, so leave a comment, and as always, constant reader, thanks for watching. Susan.